Hello everyone, welcome to Urbanscape Bangalore and in this episode we will be talking about the Phalaenopsis orchid care. So the Phalaenopsis orchid is also an epiphytic orchid like the Dendrobium. So I just wanted to show you a difference between uh, the Dendrobium as well as the Phalaenopsis. The flowers look like this. So almost similar but look at how this part looks like it looks like someone is actually dancing a lady is dancing and look at this part so these are completely different you can see that there are two fang like things here like let me just take a close up of this so for example you can see these two fang like things but the dendrobium does not have that right so this is how you can differentiate between a dendrobium and a phalaenopsis orchid so the phalaenopsis orchid is also called the moth orchid because it resembles a moth when it is flying hence it is called the phalaenopsis orchid so another way of differentiating between the uh, dendrobium and the phalaenopsis orchid is the leaf so the leaves are something similar to a wanda so it kind of looks almost like a wanda as well as the dendrobium uh, orchid leaves the dendrobium orchid leaves will be a little more thinner this is a little more fatter and that is how you can distinguish between a phalaenopsis and a dendrobium so the Phalaenopsis orchid is a wonderful indoor orchid and this is a very widely used indoor orchid. So if at all you are planning to bring uh, an orchid indoors then the Phalaenopsis is a better option than the Dendrobium one. Because the Dendrobium would need more light than the Phalaenopsis orchid. So I had covered extensively on how to take care of an orchid in another video of which I will also be putting the link in the description box. But another important thing that you have to take care of while taking care of a Phalaenopsis orchid is lighting. So the light requirements for the Phalaenopsis orchid is a little different from the Dendrobium orchid. This can tolerate a little more shade than the Dendrobium orchid. So a west or a south facing window especially if you are uh, located in an area where you get intense sunlight then that is not the right place to put this in. However since I live in Bangalore which is uh, blessed with a lot of moderate climatic conditions I will still keep this in my veranda where uh, it will be exposed to the south and west uh, sunlight and I will see on how it goes if it really burns then I will probably have to shift it somewhere probably uh, to the terrace and f make it face the northern side where it will not get too much of sunlight but this will be on an experimental basis but sure shot for people who stay in really hot climatic conditions like for, for example Rajasthan or uh, any place in Kerala or in the um, northern parts of this country then please do not attempt at growing this in the southwest zones and definitely do not grow this under full sunlight because otherwise the leaves will burn the flowers will burn everything will go for a toss so please do not do that Another uh, requirement that this plant or orchids generally would need is regular watering especially if it is outside and you give it the right draining conditions. If it does not have good drainage etc please make sure that you reduce watering. It definitely does not like sitting in water. The roots will rot and the plant will die. So for the Phalaenopsis orchid, again the fertilizer requirement is the same. I would only recommend compost, compost and nothing but compost. That is the best fertilizer I feel that you can give to your orchids. So let me just give you a close-up of how the Dendrobium uh, orchids look like. So you can see the leaves here. Uh, there is a new leaf coming out. So 
so you can see that a new leaf is coming out so uh, it, it almost looks like this as though there is a pseudo bulb kind of a feeling you get from the phalaenopsis orchid so this is also uh, something that you can distinguish the orchid and then while repotting the orchid what you can do is if you find these dry leaves then you can cut this off uh, sorry dry uh, roots you can cut this off because it's of no use but if you find uh, uh, you know if you find roots which are very green in color then those are really good roots do not do anything with it and then you can definitely take off uh, these old leaves as well so this actually was grown in a, a bark medium so these are the barks that the uh, garden center is used so another important thing that you have to uh, bear in mind is that if at all you're using plastic do not use black opaque plastic containers because that would kind of burn the roots of the plant so that is not something that is required so if at all you're looking at growing in plastic containers look at clear plastic containers like this wherein you can see the root systems if it is doing well if it is rotting etc as well as it also helps in the photosynthesis aspect of the orchid as well so but like i generally like using a lot of ceramic containers for my orchid so i will be using that ceramic container there and it has a drainage hole i will not be covering it with anything i will just be using the uh, uh, the potting medium so you can use the same potting medium but make sure you can use the same potting medium as it uh, came in this uh, in this particular uh, container but make sure that it is not disintegrated too much it still has some elements of it uh, still intact so I will be mixing this along with some uh, charcoal that I had from the earlier experience so if at all you're using um, containers like this plastic containers like this make sure that you create holes so that it gets more drainage as well as a lot of air passes through it as well so now let us see so while reporting always make sure that you hold the root system and not the leaves so they've actually mixed some perlite etc which is not a good idea you can see the So uh, the, the potting medium is a little too wet. So another easy way of finding whether your orchid roots are really wet etc. Is if it turns really green like this. That means there is a lot of water. And if it turns very silvery like this. That means it does not have water. So check your orchids for whether it is hydrated or not. Which is very important. I generally like watering my uh, orchids every day because I have very good drainage. It, the water just uh, goes out of the container. So I water it every day. It's a myth that uh, you don't have to water it every day. But make sure if it is indoors, then uh, definitely see that uh, see to it that you know uh, it does not uh, it does not have root rot. So now I will be placing some charcoal pieces inside that container. And then the plant will go inside. You can add the existing potting medium then some more charcoal to give it a solid base so now you can see that uh, the orchid is sturdy it is standing upright 
so that is it folks i just showed you on how to differentiate between a dendrobium and a phalaenopsis and what are the conditions it requires etc mm -hmm. so another important thing about uh, the blooming aspect of an orchid is how low the temperature can get at night so in bangalore sometimes the temperature especially during the winter times it gets really low up to 20 degrees celsius to 18 degrees celsius etc so that is ideal for these orchids to rebloom any orchids for that matter but one differentiating point between the dendrobium and the phalaenopsis is that the dendrobium gives out constant blooms throughout the year the phalaenopsis blooms probably twice a year but the blooms definitely stay for three months together so in a way it is really good because it is long lasting uh, the phalaenopsis would definitely require a stake because the the flowers uh, you know droop down really uh, too heavily so staking would be necessary if you are growing this indoors but i believe that i'm uh, you know the flowers should just let should should be just let should be kind of allowed to grow on itself by itself so i'm not going to stake it or anything of that sort this will be hanging through the ledge outside in my veranda facing the southwest region so that is it folks if there is anything more and if there are any more questions that you have on how to take care of the phalaenopsis this is just a small um, prelude to a, uh, to, to a very good uh, care video of phalaenopsis however experience teaches you a lot so let me experience the phalaenopsis a little better the dendrobium i've experienced it so i can tell you in a very uh, you know confident capacity however phalaenopsis these are the basic requirements that the phalaenopsis has but let me see on how adaptive this orchid can get in my place so a lot of people will tell you a lot of things but at the end of the day your experience is the best experience thank you for watching urbanscape bangalore and if you like this video then please do not forget to subscribe